and I've never had an experience like that. For 17 years, Steve Ibell and Kai Diorca made SeaWorld shows exciting and tens of thousands of people saw them during the time they performed together. But all that was good came to a crashing end. During one of Steve and Kai's routine performance, Kai stopped following commands of his trainer and began slamming and tossing Steve around like a chew toy as a live audience watched in complete horror and disarray. This is the jaw-dropping story of Steve Ibell who was attacked by an orca he had trained for two decades. Steve Ibell was a seasoned professional in the world of animal training and behavior. For over 27 years, Steve had dedicated his career to the care and enrichment of marine mammals, particularly killer whales, bottlenose dolphins, and beluga whales. With a bachelor's degree in psychology from the University of Delaware, Steve's journey into the world of animal training began with a solid understanding of behavioral principles. His educational background laid a strong foundation for his future endeavors in working with animals. Steve's career took off when he joined SeaWorld San Antonio as an assistant curator in the zoology department back in 1994. Over the span of 23 years with SeaWorld, he played a crucial role in coordinating and directing animal training efforts focusing on enhancing the well-being of marine mammals under his care. Steve's expertise extended beyond just killer whales to encompass various cetaceans and pinnipeds, demonstrating his versatility and dedication to the field. His passion for animal welfare and training led him to consult with various organizations, including Service Dogs Incorporated, where he applied the principles of positive reinforcement methodology. Through his consultations, Steve shared his wealth of knowledge and experience, contributing to the advancement of animal training practices in diverse settings. But his long experience with marine animals didn't protect him from what happened because captive animals are very dangerous. But more on that later. As a professional member of the International Marine Animal Trainers Association, IMATA, and the Animal Behavior Management Alliance, ABMA, Steve remained actively engaged in the community continuously learning and sharing insights with fellow professionals. He presented papers and posters on behavior and training of marine mammals, further establishing himself in the field. In addition to his hands-on work with animals, Steve also ventured into the realm of education and corporate training. He conducted well-done seminars at SeaWorld, delivering valuable lessons on the benefits of positive reinforcement in both animal care and corporate environments. Steve's ability to translate complex training concepts into accessible and practical insights made him a sought-after speaker among large corporations. After his tenure at SeaWorld San Antonio, Steve took on a new challenge as the Senior Director of Animal Behavior and Trainer at the John G. Shedd Aquarium in Chicago. There, he continued to leverage his expertise to enhance the well-being of marine life and educate the public about the importance of conservation efforts. In October 2021, Steve returned to SeaWorld Parks and Entertainment Incorporated as the Vice President of Zoology Operations. It was a typical day at SeaWorld San Antonio, Texas on July 27, 2004, as crowds gathered to witness the mesmerizing performances of the park's star attraction, the killer whales. Among them was Kai, an orca known for his normally gentle demeanor Little did anyone know that this day would take a terrifying turn. As the show The Shamu Adventure commenced, Steve, an experienced trainer with 17 years of animal training under his belt at the time, took to the water with Kai. Their bond seemed unbreakable, having worked together for a decade. But as the performance unfolded, something went horribly wrong. Without warning, Kai's behavior shifted dramatically. Instead of following Steve's commands, the orca began to slam into him with alarming force, tossing him around like a rag doll. The crowd watched in horror as Steve struggled to stay afloat, repeatedly forced underwater by the massive creature. Eyewitnesses recount the harrowing scene, describing how Kai seemed intent on inflicting harm, even attempting to bite Steve during the ordeal. Despite the chaos unfolding before them, SeaWorld staff was powerless to intervene as the attack continued for several minutes. Miraculously, Steve managed to escape the water unscathed, 
his years of training and composure likely saving his life. Reflecting on the incident, Steve remained remarkably calm, attributing his survival to his ability to remain composed throughout the ordeal. He noted that Kai, nearing breeding age, may have been driven by adolescent hormones leading to his erratic behavior. The aftermath of the attack sent shockwaves through SeaWorld and the broader community. Questions were raised about the safety of the trainers working closely with these powerful marine mammals. SeaWorld swiftly reassessed its policy, implementing changes to ensure the well-being of both trainers and animals. Following the attack, Kai was banned from any future interactions with trainers, signaling a significant shift in SeaWorld's approach to working with orcas. While the incident served as a sobering reminder of the inherent risk involved in training large marine animals, it also highlighted the resilience and bravery of individuals like Steve, who dedicate their lives to understanding and caring for these creatures. Kai is now 32 years old, fully grown, measures about 22 feet in length and weighs over 9,000 pounds. His muscular body, distinctive eye patches, and collapsed dorsal fin are characteristic features inherited from his parents. He was born on December 24, 1991, at the Sealand of the Pacific Aquarium in British Columbia, Canada. Decades later, he remained confined within the walls of SeaWorld San Antonio, his life story marked by tragedy and captivity. Kai's parents were Haida II and Tilikum, who were also captive orcas with Rocky Pass. Haida II was captured from her North Atlantic home waters near Iceland in 1982 and later transferred to Sealand of the Pacific, where Kai was born. However, their time together was cut short when Hai Tu died tragically from a brain abscess in 2001, leaving Kai orphaned at just nine years old. Tilikum, on the other hand, had his own tragic story, and his life became widely known through the documentary Blackfish. Upon his arrival at SeaWorld San Antonio in 1993, Kai's life took a different turn. The care and conditions at SeaWorld offered an improvement over sea land allowing Kai to thrive and grow. Despite the loss of his mother, Kai continued to mature and develop, forming close bonds with other orcas at the park. However, Kai's transition to SeaWorld was not without its challenges. Several incidents before one with Steve was brushed off, but after that, he was banned from water work. Despite this, trainers continued to work closely with Kai on land, focusing on his care and training outside of the water. Today, Kai remains a resident of SeaWorld San Antonio, where he spends most of his time with Tua, his half-brother and closest companion. Occasionally, he participates in shows alongside other orcas. Despite the limitations of captivity, Kai is lucky to be active and healthy. Kai formed close relationships with other orcas, but it was his bond with Takara, a female orca transferred to SeaWorld San Antonio in 2009 that became particularly significant. Together, they welcomed a calf named Kyra in 2017, marking the last killer whale birth at any SeaWorld facility. What happened to Steve wasn't the only unfortunate event with orcas in SeaWorld. Their malpractices with these animals sprawled back over half a century, and there were dozens of accidents. These magnificent creatures have been at the center of controversy surrounding SeaWorld. SeaWorld's history with orcas dates back to the 1960s, when they began capturing them from the wild for entertainment purposes. But back then, little was known about the complex social structures and intelligence of orcas, and their capture was viewed as a means to entertain audiences. As the years passed, SeaWorld became synonymous with its iconic killer whale shows. However, behind the scenes, there were questionable treatment and ethical concerns around the captivity of these intelligent mammals. One of the most significant controversies was the practice of separating calves from their mothers at a young age. In the wild, orcas form family bonds with calves staying by their mother's sides for years. However, at SeaWorld, calves were often separated from their mothers prematurely, leading to emotional distress and psychological trauma. Moreover, the confined spaces presented numerous challenges for orcas accustomed to roaming the oceans. In the wild, orcas swim long distances engage in complex social behaviors, and hunt for their food. However, in captivity, they are confined to small tanks, which can lead to boredom, stress, and even aggression. The documentary Blackfish shed light on these issues, 
sparking widespread public outrage and prompting a closer examination of SeaWorld's practices. The film exposed the harsh realities faced by orcas in captivity, highlighting instances of aggression, injuries, and even fatalities involving trainers. In response to mounting pressures and declining attendance, SeaWorld announced an end to its orca breeding program in 2016. While this was hailed as a step in the right direction, critics argued that it was a little too late. Many question why it took years of public outcries and negative publicity for SeaWorld to acknowledge the harmful effects of captivity on the orcas. Nevertheless, stopping the program didn't prevent numerous attacks in the previous decades, nor the many others before and after that. Steve was lucky, but many others weren't. Should SeaWorld suffer further consequences? How can we prevent malpractice towards animals in what should be educational parks? Is there a functional alternative, or should animals just be left alone? We have our thoughts, but maybe a similar story could give some answers. Shown on screen. <laughs>